Okay guys, so welcome to Smoke Wagon 1.2. This video series is all about what we're gonna do on the range, okay? And so you and I can come to the understanding on what's going to happen then, okay? Uh, 1.2, I call it my advanced pistol. Um, not because it's about concealment, because it is about concealment, but uh, because it's about protecting yourself using cover, concealment, and concealing your your pistol as well, okay? So, packing list for this thing. You absolutely must have a pistol, obviously. At least two magazines, uh, 300 rounds of ammunition, eye protection, ear protection. Uh, you should probably bring some water and snacks and stuff like that. Um, and then if you want to have a holder for your magazines, for example, then by all means do that, but it has to be concealed. So that's something to think about. What I typically do is I just have it in my pocket or something of that nature, or maybe I don't even have one. All right. With today's magazines, there's like this one fits 15. If I can't hit something in 15 rounds, man. Well, I don't know. Maybe I need to go to the range some more. But that's my point of view, okay? Um, others have other points of view. Some people say you always have to have an extra magazine. I don't think that's uh, necessarily true, but I digress. Um, let's talk about holster selection, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clear so no bullets in the magazine and it's clear. Chamber bolt face magazine well. And let it go forward. Holsters nowadays, they're most of them are Kydex that are any good. I'd veer a steel clear away from like leather nowadays, because leather can bend. And um, yeah, it might be a little more comfortable, but if something gets in that trigger well and pulls that trigger, well, boom. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kydex holsters are, are comfortable enough. They're small enough. They're skinny enough. In fact, they're probably skinnier than most of your leather when it comes to the material. And, uh, and you can tighten them up as much as you need to. So, speaking of tightening up, um, uh, I use We The People holsters, but... Uh, that brand is just a cool brand because it's We The People, right? But there's other companies out there that do the exact same thing that are cheaper and you'll probably get them in the, in the mail faster. Um, I literally have another holster that looks exactly like this, but it's not We The People. So I got a couple of links down in the bottom you can check out, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, the, way you, the way you adjust this thing, after you clear the firearm, like you saw me do, you place it in the holster. You heard it kind of click into place. Okay, you want to be able to hold it upside down and do this without it coming out. Okay, if it comes out at all, well, how much did you have to do it, right? For example, uh, you want to be able to just do this, just a little bit of pressure to pull it out. Since this is inside the waistband, I want it a little looser because that belt of mine is going to keep more friction on the firearm. Okay? So, that's holsters for the inside of the waistband. Outside of the waistband, you want it a little more tight, okay? And also, obviously, if you're going to do outside the waistband, then you're going to probably have a jacket or some kind of button up on that's going to completely conceal, um, conceal your your fire. <clears throat> um, I have a t-shirt on and what I suggest about clothing is if you're going to wear, if you're going to wear a t-shirt, make sure that it's at least one size bigger than you are. Um, so that way, if you put it into your appendix or something, you're not printing and printing is nothing more than you can see the firearm through the shirt. You can see this one through the shirt. So I'll have to like fluff it up a little bit just so it's not being printed. 
Um, I should probably, if I'm gonna wear only this shirt, then I should probably have another size bigger than this one, for example. But I'm not, for this demonstration and video, I'm not wearing one of this shirt. Which, means, which brings me to another point. You should probably have an undershirt on. Under any other shirt that you may want to use. Now, I'm going to use this <clears throat> flannel just so I can show you guys both um, both open garment and closed garment, for example. I'm going to button it up and then we're going to talk about that. Obviously, if I have it opened and I'm not using my undershirt to conceal my firearm, then I wouldn't be able to do appendix carry and conceal at the same time. So we're going to talk about the side position first, which would be three o'clock for right-handed shooters, nine o'clock for left-handed shooters. Okay. So we'll put it in three, three o'clock position. I'm going to do a 360. You guys can see that's concealed. Okay. Now, obviously this has some disadvantages having an open garment, the wind blows or something of that nature. Or if I if it gets hot, then I gotta take this thing off, and then then what am I gonna do with the pistol, for example? So there's some disadvantages to it, but there's a lot of advantages. Whereas if you have a, a button up like this or a jacket or something like that, um, it doesn't look abnormal to just have it open. Um, but the other disadvantage is that you're limited into where you can carry. A couple different techniques and we'll go through them. The one is I have both hands and I want to be able to clear the garment to reach my, my firearm or my sidearm. But I have both hands, they're available. I don't have anything in my sport hand, I don't have anything in my, my strong hand. I just have both hands and they're available. So it's really easy. I'm just gonna clear the garment away up out and away, and I'm gonna come in, grab the pistol at the one position, come to two position, to three, and to four. Okay? So we'll put it up. Now, sometimes you might find yourself in a pickle where your garment doesn't clear completely, for example, and it comes in here like this, and you can't get out to the three position. All you're going to do is, as long as you have a good grip, you're just going to punch out and let that garment slip out of your hands and then acquire your target okay so that may happen while i'm doing these demonstrations and i'll just i'll just go i'll go with it okay so clear the garment into position one two three four that's with my strong hand okay now notice when i was putting it back in because we'll be doing this at the range I'm just scraping the bottom of the pistol grip over so I can come in to the holster without shooting myself, right? So just here into the holster, okay? Um, one more time. Clear, one, two, three, four. And what am I doing with this hand? Well, you can put it here close to your body so that when you come out, you're already here in the three position and at the three position, that's when we meet our hands up, okay? So. All right, so that's with my strong hand and I have both hands available at the time. Now let's say I'm holding something, let's say a child. For example, I'm holding a child here, I can't use this hand. The principle is still the same. Clear the garment, one, two, three, four. But I just don't have anything to stabilize my pistol. One more time. Something's in my hand. One, two, three, four, okay? Let's say I have something in my right hand, or my strong hand. 
how am I going to get to this firearm with an open garment while it's on the side? Well, let's say I have something in my right hand. I cannot use it. I'm going to come up underneath my garment and go and grab the pistol grip, which I'll show you here. Pistol grip right there. Okay. And I make sure that I grab, I have a good hold on that pistol grip. So I got a child in my hand, for example, I'm carrying my son or whatever. I'm going to go up underneath my garment, lean over, grab it by the pistol grip. You guys can see. And then now I have to, I have to turn it around. So I got a couple different options. I always have the option of putting it in my legs and then turn it over, getting my stance and then presenting. Okay. I always have that option. The other option I have, <clears throat> let's say I'm in a restaurant or I'm at the store or maybe I'm kneeling on the ground. I don't know. The other option I have is use some kind of flat surface, place it down, then grab it, and then to the threat. Okay? So it looks something like this. So you ready? Stand by. Beep. Boom. So that's the three o'clock, three o'clock position with an open arm. Next thing we're going to talk about is the appendix position with a closed garment. Okay. Um, this is my favorite position. Okay. There's pros and cons to both three and side. Three o'clock is a little more comfortable. However, you're limited. Well, you're limited in a couple ways. If you sit down in your car, your vehicle, whatever, and you have a three o'clock, then you likely are going to have to ha have to move the gun entirely on your hip, okay? Uh, you're going to have to use or, or use a lockbox or something in your vehicle, but then if you have to egress from your vehicle, then you have to remember to grab it kind of a thing. So I don't like that. Now with your appendix, you don't have to move it. You don't have to. You don't have to put it in the lockbox. You can get to it with your seatbelt on. Um, if you have to egress from your vehicle for whatever reason, it's with you. Okay. Or if you get in a wreck and you go tumbling and you get launched, then in theory it would be with you. I'm not saying that it won't come out of the holster if you get launched, but in theory the, the pistol will stay with you. So we're going to talk about drawing the pistol. In a couple of different ways. One, we're going to talk about using both hands. Then two, we're going to talk about using only my strong hand. And then three, we're going to talk about using only my support hand. Um, and we're going to go all, over all these at the range as well. Okay? So, the first one, the most easy, we're going to use both hands. Okay? Say there's a threat and I have to pull the smoke wagon. That means I'm going to grab the bottom of the garment. I'm going to come up and over the pistol and pistol grip. I'm going to come in to the grip. And then position two for me is a little bit different. This is position one. Position two, I come up and into my armpit, pointing at the, the uh, threat, for example. Uh, the reason why I do that is so I'm, I'm not coming up like this. I'm already kind of in the position. Okay, so you could technically come here and then up and then, you know, it's just awkward, I think. I think it's better just to come straight up into the armpit. Now you're pointing at the, the target. And then when you come in to the third position, which is where your hands meet, and then through it into the fourth, right? So it looks something like this, okay? All right. One more time, up and over. Now, we're gonna talk about clearing the garment with only my strong hand. Again, I got a shot in my hand or something like that, okay? Something precious, I can't just toss it, can't throw it away, okay? Something I have to hold. So, here we go. You're gonna come 
you're gonna get you gotta clear the garment so you can come up and over and then from here you're gonna use your thumb and open your hand and then then you can come straight down in position one and then just like we were just doing with both hands okay again here we go One more time. Again, if you have some, if you, for whatever reason, you get some kind of article clothing in here, just push out. Just push out and hold on to the gun. Hold on to the gun as hard as you can and just push out so that that article clothing can clear. And then you continue to engage the threat, okay? One more time. Okay, now, support hand only. Again, clear the garment, come down, grab the pistol grip, out, either on the floor or on the table or between your legs, switch your hands, engage. Shooter, if you're ready, go ahead and switch hands. Shooter, you ready? Stand by. Beep. Shooter, if you're ready, switch hands. And I'm looking, I'm looking at where I'm going. Every time that I go put this firearm in my holster, I'm looking at it, make sure that nothing is getting caught on the, uh, the, the trigger, okay? Um, so those are, the, those are the three techniques, right? So the first one is both hands, right? The second one, is my strong hand only and the third one is my weak hand only now we're going to talk about the three o'clock position with the closed garment okay same principle both hands strong hand we can, just like we're talking about with the appendix carry. Um, I don't like the three o'clock position, but uh, it does have it does have its practical purposes, and it is rather more comfortable, right? But again, it's going to be more difficult to get out in the vehicle if you're <clears throat> right-handed, for example. Um, and then if you have a closed garment like this, it's going to be more difficult to get out of your waist. Okay. We're just going to cover it real quickly. Uh, both hands. Clear the garment. One, two, three, four. Strong hand only. Switch to the thumb. Come down. One, two, three, four. And this was the difficult one. Weak hand only. Or support hand. So I have to really bend over to get it. And once I get it, I'm ready to go. <clears throat> that is concealing a pistol on your hip, either the appendix carry or the side carry. I don't do back carries. I don't think they're practical. Um, again, I, I don't do I don't do the uh, shoulder holsters either. I don't think they're practical. We're going to talk about clothing now. Um, obviously, um, you want something loose fitting. Okay, so this is pretty loose fitting. This button up here is pretty loose fitting. Okay, uh, obviously a jacket would be loose fitting or at least it should be loose fitting. Um, much like this one, and this one's padded, so this is gonna definitely give you some 
good coverage. So, you, so nobody can see that you have a pistol. Um, if you're going to wear a t-shirt only, you should definitely you should definitely make sure you're at least a size bigger so you're not printing. You can see I'm printing right here. So this should be a size bigger. If I put it in my appendix, I'm still going to be printing a tad bit. Your clothing should be dark, maybe irregular patterns. Uh, I wouldn't wear white or anything like that. Um, and uh, solid colors, unless they're really dark like this one, aren't are a good idea. Okay, so that's, that's the clothing option. You need to have a belt that is sturdy and rigid that is going to withstand the weight of your firearm and potentially the other things that you have. This is a core belt. I sell core belts. Uh, this one's rated at eight pounds. Um, if you have one of those Kmart belts or anything like that, no good. The other good thing about this belt is I can, I can if I'm in the bathroom or whatever, I can switch pretty quickly if I need to. Okay? If I need to sit down, I can really just loosen it up. I can sit down, and then when I stand back up, I can tighten it up again. All without having to go through the, the mess of like undoing it, getting in, getting the other hole, putting it in there, or keeping it tight and just completely uncomfortable. So that kind of clothing. Um, these pants I have on have a little have a little pocket here. I could put a magazine if I wanted to. Now it's pretty low, so I would have to have something long so it would cover. But they have another pocket up here as well where it would cover. So your pants, your belt, your uh, shirts. You got to really think about what your clothing choices are when you talk about concealed carry. Specifically when you conceal carry it on your waist. All right, so um, that's pretty much all I have for the clothing portion of this.